Has the fight to save Trentham High School all been in vain? Yesterday, the government announced it signed off plans to reorganise secondary education in Stoke-on-Trent. That includes shutting four schools, meaning cutting the number of schools in the city from 17 to 13, and as part of that, they'd open five new academy schools. So does that mean, despite months of campaigning, that Trentham High will shut? City Councillor Roger Ibbs gave us that impression. In terms of Trentham, it's the only area in BSF that's still to be decided where that school will be and now we have to look uh, very quickly at whether or not the site is on the Blurton site or on an adjoining site. Um, wherever it is, it has to serve both communities. And Daniel Jordan from the Trentham Action Group says the fight is far from over. We will continue to lobby local councillors. I think it was made clear by Jim Knight, that's the Minister for Schools, yesterday that although he has approved the plans, he is saying that this is a local issue and if therefore local councillors decide that they want to keep Trentham open, they've seen the light and that there is another option in the cooperative trust that we're proposing, then he's made it clear that he will accept that and he will rubber stamp that proposal as well. But Rob Flello, the Labour MP for Stoke-on-Trent South, has been fighting to keep both Trentham and Longton High Schools open. He's been explaining to me what the government's announcement actually means. It says that they, the government have had through the uh, initial document that sets the scene, if you like. It doesn't give the detail of what they, the council plan to do about it. Uh, it was disappointing that the document has gone to this report uh, not so long back now, which suggested that the council needed to work more closely with its MPs. Um, but I think really in terms of what it means is it means we just have to keep fighting. So were you surprised when this came out then? Um, I was a little surprised that uh, that it had been um, uh, the document, the part one document, had gone to the minister without, as I say, without the members of parliament being notified. Um, but um, I suppose I shouldn't really be surprised by anything these days. What does that mean? Uh, I think it means that um, all of the way along, really, the council have, uh, as I said in my speech, um, and Serco have have you know, misinformed have controlled information, have done things in a way that has made it hard for, for people to fight, uh, to, to have a sensible pattern of schools across the city, uh, and this is just one more uh, demonstration of that. The Trentham High Action Group says it's going to continue to fight the proposals. What more can you do? Well, I shall continue to keep the pressure up uh, from the Westminster end. Uh, I had planned to have more uh, Westminster Hall debates, more German debates. I plan to, uh, to target the uh, um, relevant minister with more questions uh, to really sort of both put him on the spot and, uh, but also to inform him of really what the situation is on the ground. Because I think, in some ways I do feel sorry for, for Jim Knight because I think the information he's getting it leads him to believe that things are different to, to you know, the reality that, that you and I know uh, it's a situation in Stoke-on-Trent. So this is the information that the minister's getting from, from who? Well, from the council and also from his own civil servants. I think uh, uh, the point he made, for example, when replying to my debate was that the figures, for example, that, that he quoted um, show that um, actually you know, there are 14,000 pupils in the, in, in, likely to be in the city. And that's, you know, that's changed. I mean, the figures that he was talking about originally from the methodology um, were, were much lower originally. So I think he's getting mixed information. With mixed information going back to, to the minister, how can we get... A set of suggestions, uh, some proposals that uh, have to be within the guidelines, but ultimately it's, it's for the city council to decide what's best for, for the area based on local knowledge. Now, what I see my part of my role in all this is to really drive forward the fact to the minister that Stoke-on-Trent may have come up with some proposals that seem to be within the guidelines, but they're not what's needed for our city. Labour MP for Stoke-on-Trent South, Rob Flello. He also told me during that conversation he'll carry on working with the Trentham Action Group and try to change the minds of the leadership at the City Council. Now, we've been in touch with Stoke-on-Trent City Council to see what they have to say about it, and we're awaiting a response. <laughs>